Thank you very much, dear President Natsinga, dear President uh, Tajani, honorable chairs, honorable members uh, of the European Parliament, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a great honor for me to appear before you as a commissioner designate. It's also a privilege uh, to open these uh, upcoming days of debate uh, and scrutiny displaying the European democracy at its best. There is also an emotional element to it. In a few weeks, we will celebrate 30 years of freedom in my country, Slovakia, following the Velvet Revolution. And I recall very well looking through the infamous Iron Curtain, through the barbed wire across the Danube, not knowing if I ever would be able to cross the river, visit our Austri Austrian neighbors, or even, as it is chance today, to work for United Europe. This experience has contributed to my firm conviction that we must build our destiny as a democratic union and to my strong respect for our common institutions and values. It's even more apparent today as the world is changing at unprecedented pace. Humanity's uh, ecological footprint has led to the global climate emergency. The global race for technological leadership is set to transform our economic models as well as societies. The multilateral rules-based order that Europe stands for is under pressure. And the age of disinformation combined with persisting inequalities put a strain on our democracy. We face a crucial question. How can the European Union ensure that we do not end up a middle power caught between the United States and China? Honorable members, to address these challenges, I'm convinced that we need more not less Europe, and a stronger European Parliament. Article 10 of the Treaty on the European Union says that our functioning shall be founded on representative democracy. And this is ever more important. Therefore, I am truly honored that President-elect wants to entrust me with both interinstitutional relations and foresight. The European Commission and the European Parliament are natural partners. We have built solid uh, foundations over the years. However, it will be my priority to take our cooperation a step further into a special partnership based on trust amongst ourselves as well as with our citizens. In particular, I will propose that our partnership extends beyond the legislative domain. It should apply more fully throughout the whole political cycle, evidence gathering and foresight to jointly shape the direction of Europe, a shared priority and agenda setting a new right of initiative, which I know is very important for you, and a better implementation, including through cutting red tape. We simply cannot continue acting in crisis management mode with predominantly intergovernmental approach. A stronger parliament means a stronger and more legitimate Europe. A stronger parliament also means moving into a shared culture of anticipation and action to be resilient in the long run. So let me now turn to concrete uh, measures, how to build this special relationship. First, I foresee close-knit cooperation between our institutions in agenda-setting stage. As you know, I should support President-elect by developing the Commission work program. This will be a matter of priority, as of our first program must be agreed already in December. From day one, I will therefore work with my colleagues uh, in the Commission as well as reach out to you, to political groups and to the conference of committee chairs in the Parliament. On this basis, we should also adopt a joint declaration on legislative priorities between our three institutions. I will also propose to adopt first ever multi-annual program as foreseen in 2016, interinstitutional agreement on better lawmaking. And this program needs to be also a co-creation exercise with a collective ownership and accountability. It also needs to be grounded in the foresight work at interinstitutional level. Second, a right of initiative for the European Parliament that would mark the start of new institutional era. As announced by President-elect, when the Parliament, acting by majority of its members, requests a legislative proposal, the Commission will respond with a legislative act in full respect of the proportionality, subsidiarity, and better lawmaking principles. To deliver swiftly, I will propose that our institutions engage 
in earliest phases of conception of parliamentary resolutions and work hand in hand at every stage in designing them. I want to put in place an early warning mechanism to ensure constant dialogue between the Commission and the Parliament. Once a parliamentary resolution is adopted, I will ensure that the College of Commissioners holds a political discussion on the subject. And such a process should facilitate understanding on substance and at the same time foster trust between our two institutions and sense of working together towards a common goal. It is in this house where the heart of European democracy beats. I will therefore work with the Vice President in the charge uh, to ensure the Parliament plays an active role in the Conference on Future of Europe. And third, I will encourage to revive discussions on pending institutional files, in particular on the right of inquiry. I have full understanding for the Parliament's attempt uh, to, re uh, to review the regulation. As uh, the discussion has been stalled over the institutional and legal concerns, I stand ready to engage in trilateral discussions. Regarding international negotiations, I will work with the relevant commissioners to ensure that the European Parliament is regularly briefed, notably before major events and at key stages of international negotiations. And fourth, petitions. As input from the citizens to detect and where appropriate to act upon breaches of EU law, I will work closely with the petitions committee throughout the year and, of course, attend its presentation of the annual report. Moreover, should we see significant number of petitions on one topic, I will encourage presence of responsible commissioners to discuss what can be done to remedy the concerns expressed. And finally, I want to work with you on better regulation and its effective and transparent implementation. Our objective should be to adopt and implement future-proof legislation that can stand the test of time which does not create unnecessary burden and delivers results at minimum cost. To this end, I want to advance the better regulation agenda further. I will propose that the REFIT platform is rebranded to a fit for the future platform. I am convinced that our legislation should be, for instance, fit for e-government and digital use. Regularly, I will report to the Parliament on the platform's findings. I also believe that we should better involve those on the receiving end of the regulation and to go more for active subsidiarity in order to do away with that uh, common impression that everything is decided in Brussels. We will strengthen the means by which local and regional authorities can inform us of the burden experienced when applying EU legislation as well as of opportunities to alleviate it. An input from you, honorable members, will be equally valuable because you interact on the ground in your constituencies. I will surely involve in this work the Committee of the Regions and the European Economic and Social Committee. I also aim to engage more actively with the Member States to ensure that when transposing EU legislation, they do not add unnecessary administrative burden. We all know it under the name cold plate. The EU institutions should be warned when a member state introduces uh, measures going beyond EU legislation requirements. And I will involve the Commission representations in this, and I will make sure that the members of the European Parliament are properly informed as well. In the first two years of the mandate, I plan to visit all national parliaments to better value the important work in, re in relations uh, to active subsidiarity and proportionality, and I will discuss with them our multi-annual programming. I will apply the one-in, one-out principle as announced by President-elect, meaning that every legislative uh, proposal with a new burden for the users should be offset by an equivalent reduction elsewhere. This is particularly key for small and medium enterprises, and I will make sure that this new principle is applied in all areas. However, and I would like to underline this, I say a clear no to a mechanical approach and to endangering our high standards, especially social and environmental. Actually, we should always weigh benefits as well. The European Parliament has done an excellent work with its study on the cost of non-Europe quantifying economic gain of 2.2 trillion euros over the 10 years if, for instance, we implement fully 
our single market, notably in the services, digital, energy, and if we address corporate tax avoidance. Therefore, via citizen summary, I want us to communicate better the evidence-based benefits for citizens, businesses, and societies as such. Our success on interinstitutional front is a prerequisite uh, for embedding foresight into the policy making. Linking the two domains can be a true game changer. This is not something abstract. And I can give you a vibrant example, the European Battery Alliance. Even if at 12th hour, we had anticipated the upcoming tectonic shift towards e-mobility. With the industry leading, we started to act strategically to build a strong value chain and start producing the greenest batteries here in Europe. And as a result, we are catching up with our Asian competitors and the sustainable future for our automotive industry seems secured. I'm honored that the president-elect has entrusted me with continuing to lead our efforts in this area. And I'm also ready to discuss other strategic sectors where Europe can make a real difference, provided that we all work together. To this end, if confirmed by you, I will propose that we strive for world-class anticipatory governance, building foresight capacity inside the Commission to serve our policy goals. And my intention is to mobilize resources of the Joint Research Center as a crucial enabler. We need to set up an EU network of strategic foresight, bringing together the best of EU institutions and the member states. As the saying goes, you are entitled to your own opinion, but not to your, to your own facts. So faced uh, with a tsunami of information, I also want to safeguard the quality of evidence and to reinforce its transparency. In practice, I will explore with the other institutions uh, the setting up of a common evidence register, open to public, where we will share the evidence used in our legislative proposals. As you know, President-elect mission letter gives me a mandate to prepare a yearly foresight report on the most relevant emerging trends. This report will inform the State of the Union speech and our programming exercise. Based on it, I will champion strategic debates in the European Parliament as well as the European Council. And I want us to agree on transformative megatrends that we need to approach strategically and develop our long-term vision for Europe with a direct impact on multi-annual programming as well. With this in mind, I will work closely with the Vice President for the Conference on the Future of Europe. Monsieur le Président, Madame la Présidente, Mesdames, Messieurs les Députés, j'ai eu le privilège de travailler avec vos commissions parlementaires au cours de deux dernières législatures. D'abord et surtout avec la Commission des affaires constitutionnelles et la Commission des affaires juridiques, puis avec celle de l'industrie, de la recherche et de l'énergie pour mettre en place l'union de l'énergie. Dans mon premier mandat, nous avons conclu l'accord cadre entre nos deux institutions. Nous avons aussi travaillé main dans la main pour obtenir du Conseil une modernisation des statuts des fonctionnaires et autres agents. Et j'ai été heureux d'avoir pu contribuer ainsi modestement à nos objectifs communs. Ma volonté est de travailler sans relâche au renforcement de notre partenariat, animé comme je le suis par mes convictions et les valeurs démocratiques héritées de la révolution des vélos. Je vous remercie de votre attention et je suis prêt pour vos questions. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Vice President Sevcovic. We start with